Hey everybody and welcome back to another how to video. Today we're going to take a look at multiplayer. And we're going to talk about three different aspects of multiplayer. First we're going to talk about joining a multiplayer session. Second we're going to talk about hosting a multiplayer session. And third we're going to talk about setting up a dedicated server for multiplayer. So like I said let's jump on in and talk about joining a multiplayer server. So if we go to multiplayer here we have three options. We can join, create, or rent a dedicated server. We're going to talk about join right now. So once you go to join, then you'll get to your typical character creation or customization screen. And let's go back. Say, so your character name, that is how you're going to appear in the multiplayer session. That's how people are going to know who you are. So just put in whatever you want based on how you want to be addressed or known within the multiplayer session. And of course, the rest allows you to customize your character however you want. I'm going to go to continue. And now we're going to pick our matchmaking server. So if you're joining a multiplayer session, the person who's hosting it has probably already told you uh, what the matchmaking server is. Uh, it's going to be either international Germany, continental Europe, or Germany too. Okay, if you pick the wrong one, you're not going to find the server you're trying to connect to. So we're going to go with international. Now it's reaching out there to the internets and pulling down a list of all of the games that are in progress that it knows about that are connected to the international server. Okay, as you can see up here at the top, we have 5,043 games that are currently in session connected to the international server. Now we're at 5,039, and this number will just keep changing. And then we have some various information over here. We've got the game name, we've got the map, the players. The first number is the number of players in the map. The second number is the maximum number of players in the map. We have the language, okay? Over here, we can see if we have an explanation, a red explanation mark, that means that there are mods needed that we do not have personally. If there's a lock, it means there's a password. And if there's a globe, it basically means it is a public server. Okay? Over here, we have a check mark, meaning that we can join if we have all the credentials and information we need. And the red X basically means that that particular server is full. All of these can be sorted. So we can sort by game name, sort by map, players, and language. And then we can come over here and we can filter things down. So we could say, I want to see only Ravenport servers. I want to only see English Ravenport servers. And I only want to see um, servers that allow, let's say, four players. Okay, you can see my list is getting shorter now. I only want servers that have a password or do not have a password. The password, yes, okay. So now I'm only seeing the public servers that are open for me to join if I wish to join. If I click no full games, now all of a sudden the list of games that are full go away. And now I've got a pretty short list and only installed mods or DLCs. Now I can click on and now it will show me the ones that I can join because I have all the mods that they use or they don't have any mods at all. Okay, so let's go and go back to our main list. Let's crank this back up to 16, which is the maximum number. Any language and any map okay what we can also do is we can sort uh, let's say we know that the server that we want to join has a specific name let's say we know that it starts with a e um, e n t now we are seeing all the servers that have e n t in them uh, let's look for and now we have all the games that have the word farmer. Okay. 
and we can sort it down even more if we wish. Look at So if we know we were wanting to connect to this particular server, for example, we can just type in that and then it will come up. Now what's really nice about this is let's just say we leave it at farmer. Okay. Now if we go back and come back in here again, join game. And let's just pick continental Europe this time. For the server to reach out, connect, and pull up a listing of all of the farm sim servers that are available. You'll see that we have 6,500 game, games currently in session on the Continental Europe server, and it's kept the game name listing here. So now we're only seeing a listing of games that match basically what our search criteria is. So that's how you can kind of whittle down and narrow down the, uh, the particular server you're trying to connect to and join. Go ahead and go back. And now let's talk about hosting a multiplayer server. We're gonna actually join a session after we talk about a dedicated server. So let's talk about creating a game. This is where you're going to host a multiplayer session on your particular computer using a game save that you have. Okay, so we got to create a game. Now it's going to pull up our save games. Okay, and let's say we're going to start a brand new one. Okay, let's do save game seven. Let's do farm manager because we are not allowed to do a hosted multiplayer in new farmer mode. We have to either do farm manager or start from scratch. See, I, that is shaded out. So let's do farm manager. And let's pick Ravenport. Okay, let me go ahead and character customization. We go to our mods, and what we can do is we can deselect all, or we can select all, yeah, you know, whatever we want to do. And basically, if we have mods selected here, though, the people that are going to try to connect to us are going to need these mods available. They're going to need the exact same version. Okay. So if you use mods that are not coming from the mod hub, you're probably going to need to share these mods with somebody via Google Drive or some other um, form of cloud storage. Basically send them a link to your mods so they can download them and have them. Or the easiest thing to do would be to have a game that only includes Giants mods and then they can get them from Giants website if they don't already have them. But the key is they have to have the exact same mod as you have okay let's continue and now we are at a multiplayer kind of connection screen we're gonna have to give the game a name you can choose to enter a password or leave it open okay i'm going to just put in a password of one two three just for fun uh, we can basically pick what time of type of internet connection do we have and that will basically help the server figure out um how it can basically connect right english auto save do you want auto save to be on or off do you want to automatically accept players or do you want to basically have to approve them okay and what's the total number of players that you want to be able to have connect to you pick two it's going to be you and one other person that's it nobody else is going to be able to connect Pick three, it's going to be you and two other people, okay? This is total number of players, not number of players plus you, right? So let's just go to two. And then if we hit start, it's going out, and it's looking for which matchmaking server we want to connect to. We're going to say international. And now it is basically creating the game, loading the map up, just as if you were going to basically play um, locally. Hit start, and here we are. We are on Raven or Ravenport at our start area in a multiplayer session. No one else is here able to join. No one else knows that password. So if someone goes and looks right now, I can't demonstrate it. 
because I only have one copy of Farm Sim here. But if someone goes and goes to International Server, searches for that game name, they'll see it listed there. They won't be able to join because it is locked down with a password. Um, and there are mods that they're going to need. But they'll be able to, if they had that information, come on in, join, and have a good old time. From the escape menu, basically we now have the new multiplayer interface. And we're going to have another how-to video on basically setting this up. We've got our game settings and everything. Normal, as we would normally. So that is basically how you would host a multiplayer session with Farm Sim 19. Now, let's talk about um, hosting a multiplayer session on a dedicated server. Okay, let me pull up a web browser. So over here we've got in my Firefox browser a Farm Sim page on renting a dedicated server. Now this relates to Farm Sim 17. But all of these providers provide Farm Sim 19 servers also. We've got gamed, multiplay game servers, game servers, Fragnet, Berry Games, Nitrito, and G Portal. Now, interesting enough, if in game, let's go back to the game itself. In game, if you go to multiplayer and you go to rent a dedicated server, okay, if you click that, you see nothing happens. Well, nothing happens in the game, but what it does have happen is over here in a web browser, it goes and jumps to this website. So, jumps to Fragnet and basically takes you to the Farming Simulator 19 Fragnet page. Interesting enough, it looks like Giants and Fragnet have entered into some type of agreement. Um, it really is looking like if you click rent a dedic dedicated server, they're push pushing you over to Fragnet. If you don't know any better, you're going to set it up from there and go on. Um, but I do want to point out that you do have other options, not just Fragnet. Uh, I personally use game servers, and I've used game servers for quite a while with respect to Farm Sim 17 servers. And you'll notice, let's go to... Uh, Let's pick, go down here and pick Farm Sim 19. Okay. So I just want to make note Farm Sim 19 at game servers starts at 99 cents a slot, 8 players, $7.95 a month. Ragnet, uh, $105 a slot, or $1.05 a slot. Okay. Let's see here. Go to 8 slots, $7.92. Um, Euros. Now, depending on your um, depending on your currency conversion, that may or may not be a better rate than the 7.95 US. Okay, and I will have in my description a referral link to game servers if you want to go with them. If you want to check them out, I'd appreciate if you used uh, my link. It would help me out quite a bit, and uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not worried about telling you that, that uh, it'd be much appreciated. So, after you've signed up for a game server from one of these providers, okay, you're going to get a web, you're going to basically get an email uh, with a web address that you're going to go to, username and password, okay? And it's going to take you to a server page that looks just like this, Farming Simulator Dedicated Server. Might have some pretty graphic or something where it says log into uh, into the server. What you're going to do is you're going to enter the username and password that they've given you, okay? And you're going to click log in, and you're going to come to this interface, okay? Now some of this would be blank or filled in already with something else. This is just from a dedicated server that I've been using for other purposes that I'm going to use for this particular demonstration. So what do you want to do is, first off, you want to give this game server a name. Okay, so I'm going to call this um, Farm Sim Demo Server. 
We're going to give it an admin password of, okay, and that is the password to be admin in the game, okay? We're going to give it a game password. This is the password to join the game, okay, 9876. And we're going to pick what game slot do we want to use. We have 20 save game slots. I'm going to pick for this demo game slot 10. Uh, what map? We have the two base maps. What mode? Farm manager or start from scratch? We don't need to change the port unless someone had already told you that. Uh, your game server is probably going to have the max slots as a number that you cannot change. Uh, that is because, as I told you, when you purchase the server, uh, you basically are purchasing it by number of slots. Okay. The more slots, the more expensive the server is per month. I'm actually hosting this server um, personally, so I can pick whatever slot count I want. We're going to pick what matchmaking server we're going to join to. So if we pick Germany and I try to join the game using international, I'm not going to see it. I'm going to pick international. I'm going to pick English. Uh, do you want the game to autosave? If you do, enter a number here. If you don't want it to autosave, enter zero. And then we have this interesting pause game if empty option. So if this is checked, what this will do is some number of minutes after everyone has left the server, it will basically put the game in a pause state. It won't stop the server, but it will pause the game as if, as if you had hit pause yourself. And it will stay in that state until someone goes to join. And once that player joins the server, it will unpause the server and time will pass. So that way, if no one's in the game, basically the server stops, if you will, time stops and freezes and it just waits for someone to connect. You can have that checked, which means it will pause. If you uncheck it, then even if no one's in the server, time will pass however you have it set up. Go ahead and check that back. Then we go over here to our Save Games tab. And we can see any save games that we may have uh, that we can either download or delete, should we so wish. So if we delete this example and we delete save game two, okay. Now if we go back here to home, we'll see that they are now empty. Basically deleted those out. Uh, if you want to download it, you can just click this, and it will download the uh, save game to your local PC. And then that way you can have a backup copy. And if you click X, it will delete it. If you want to upload a save game to the server, you can do that here. You can click save game slot, name it, should you so wish. And then you can browse out to your PC and upload the zip file. You want to zip up all of the save game folder into a zip and browse here and hit upload. At that point, you will see it listed here. Manage save games, go back to home, you'll be able to pick it as a save game that you want to start. And you can pick to restore a backup, should you so wish. Uh, maybe something's gotten corrupted, maybe, uh, well, who knows, maybe someone's coming in and did something by accident uh, or did something malicious to the server and you want to restore it from a backup. Mods. So this is where you're going to basically be managing your mods. Okay. As you can see right now, we have no mods on the server. Typical um, dedicated game servers are going to give you four gigs or less of mod space. Again, I'm hosting this uh, myself on hardware that I have. So I've got significantly more um, mod space available. Down here, you will now see a listing of the mods that are in the Giants Mod Hub. And you can look at various categories. You can look at maps, top downloaded, at latest, etc. 
And what you can do from here is, let's say you know you want some of these mods on your server. Well, you can just click right here, the little blue download error, arrow. And what it will do is it will basically queue up the, uh, the mods and it will download them directly from Giants to your server. Okay, let's say you've got mods that you want to add to the uh, to the server that you don't necessarily have a copy of, or Giants doesn't have, or you just don't want to up download, let's say the map. Okay, so you can go here and browse, and then go to your download screen. And you can download, or you can basically select to upload to the server a map or a mod that you have local that may or may not be necessarily here on the mod hub. Hit upload. See, we are now going to be basically uploading that mod to the uh, to the server. It's not going to take too terrible long to do that because I've got this on my local network. All right, so we've got the mods that we want added to our server here in the mod screen. We're going to go back to home. And at the bottom down here, we are going to basically activate the mods so that they're available for the game save. So we can just click all, or we can single click if we want. So we're just going to click all, and then we're going to click activate. And we're going to see them move from activate mods to active mods. All right. Let's go back up here and let's enter our password once again. One, two, three, four, five, and nine, eight, seven, six as the game password. We're going to call this what? Arm Sim Demo Server. Okay. And we're going to pick slot 10. And now you can see, now that we've uploaded the map, is now available as part of the map selection. Start from scratch. Our farm manager mode. So we're going to do start from scratch. Okay. So hit save. Just going to save our settings. Okay. And we have a listing of mods that are active. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit start. Okay, so up here now we see it says online. And now we have a CPU chart, RAM, hard disk, uptime, and number of players over the last 24 hours. These charts are basically real time as they exist now. Then this is showing you over the last 30 minutes. So something that we can do is we can go to settings, go to log files. And basically we can see a list of, basically see in our log, the game loading, loading up mods, etc. Now this is going to be extremely useful when it comes to troubleshooting. If you're having problems. Also go to the server log and see the server log. And we can go to web server log, basically if we want to and basically see information related to our web server. Okay. Under miscellaneous, we have some options. We can basically enable a public mod download. Deactivate or activate that. Right now this is activated. And what that'll do is basically it will allow a player, if you send them the link, uh, that will allow them to basically go to a page to download the mods that you need in order to play. Look at that here in a moment. We can turn on automatic game server restart, make that active, and then we can say restart the server between 2 and 5 a.m., uh, basically when it's empty. Okay, so if we hit save now every day between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m., the game server is just going to restart on its own as if you closed the game and reopened it um, and basically help keep things running smooth. Let's go to mods again. 
And what you can do is if you give them this URL up here, which you're not going to be able to see. I've kind of blacked that out, blocked it out. But basically, if you give them the mod URL, then they can go to this page and they can either download individual mods they need or they can just download all active mods. Okay, and it will download it to their PC in a zip file. They can unzip that into their mod folder and then they'll be able to connect and join your game. All right, so we've waited long enough and we're now going to be able to join this particular game uh, that we have just set up. Let's go ahead and bring up our game again. And let's go to join game. Continue. Go international. And remember, we had named this what? Farm Sim Demo Server. Right here. So this is the game that we set up. You see it's password protected. Uh, it is ready for us to join. We don't have a um, explanation point. Now what we can do is we can click on details. Basically it will give us some information as to the mods that are active. The map. It's got a password. Number of people in the game. There is no reason. We don't need to download anything. Uh, if we did, we would have a red explanation mark next to something. And at that point, we could download the mod or DLC. Click this. It would attempt to take us to the Giants Mod Hub. If the mod's not on the Mod Hub, it's going to give you an error. If it is on, on the Mod Hub, it's going to give you an option to download it. Okay? Can't download DLCs without buying it. So pretty much it's going to say take you to DLC purchase page. That's what that's going to do. So it's not like a way you can get around having to pay for it. See, what we're going to do now is we're going to hit start. It's going to ask us for the password. Well, remember we set that up as 9876. Start. Now we're connecting to the map. We're going to say syncing, loading. Basically, we are loading into the map right now someone was in the map they would probably see the you know pause synchronizing data start and here we are we're now on our multiplayer server that we just set up uh, down there in the mini map we see a number okay just above field three we see a number right now it's, it's hovering between um, 10 and 15 milliseconds that is the delay, uh, the network delay between us and the server. The smaller that number, the better. You get too high of a number there, and you're going to have some lag issues. Uh, you're going to basically feel like uh, you're not getting response from the uh, from the game as you're expecting. The escape, you can see here we are at our farms menu. And again, if we go to log as admin, and we enter that admin password that we set up. Remember, it was one, two, three, four, five. Yep. Hit start. It says we're successfully logged in as admin. And now we have the ability to do various other functions. This is where we're going to basically leave off this video. We're going to start another how to video right after this that's going to basically deal with setting up farms, etc. And uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and click that like button. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're not a subscriber, because we're going to be putting out more how-to videos in the near future. So until next time, guys, happy farming.